volcanic eruptions may have sparked various little ice ages. One was called the Late Antique Little Ice Age. It was long lasting in the Northern Hemisphere and the cooling period was between 6th and 7th century AD. During the period known as Late Antiquity, the existence of the cooling period proposed as a theory in 2015 was subsequently confirmed as the interval between 536 AD to 660 AD. This period coincides with two to three immense volcanic eruptions in 536, 539 to 540, and 547 AD. The 536 eruption is believed to have been from a volcano near the Arctic, such as in Alaska or Iceland. The 539 to 40 volcano is believed to have been Ilo Pango in present-day El Salvador. Another suspected volcano site is the Rabaul Caldera in the Western Pacific, which erupted around 540 AD. The extreme weather events of 535 to 536 were the early phenomena of the century-long global temperature decline. One study suggested the global cooling was 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit. The evidence comes from a temperature reconstruction from the Euromed 2K working shop, workshop work group of the International Pages that's Pass Global Changes Project using new tree ring measurements from the Altai Mountains, which closely matches the temperature in the Alps in the last two centuries. Additional ice cores from Greenland and Antarctica show increases in sulfate, a product of volcanic eruptions at 536 and 539 to 540 AD. Regional impacts were in Mesoamerica. It's theorized that the eruption of Ilopango and subsequently weather events and agricultural failures directly led to the abandonment of the Teotihuacan by the original inhabitants. Teotihuacan is the ancient Mesoamerican city located in the sub-valley of the Valley of Mexico, located in the state of Mexico, 40 kilometers or 25 miles northeast of modern-day Mexico City. Teotihuacan is known today as the site of many of the most architecturally significant Mesoamerican pyramids. In the Middle East, according to research done by Israeli scientists, started the, the volcanic eruption there and the demise started in 540 AD. The size of the population of the city of Elusa in the Negev desert and the amount of garbage it generated shrank greatly. Elusa housed tens of thousands of people during its height. The major decline took place around the middle of the 6th century about a century before the Islamic conquest, and one possible explanation for the crisis was the late antique Little Ice Age. In the Mediterranean region, the cooling period coincided with the plague of Justinian that began in 541. That plague was a pandemic that affected the Byzantine Empire and especially its capital, Constantinople, as well as the Sasanian Empire and port cities around the Mediterranean Sea as merchant ships harbored rats that carried fleas infected with this plague. And that began 541, though the connection between the plague and the volcano still remains tenuous. And as we know, volcanoes may have sparked the Little Ice Age, as we said, caused by a series of volcanic eruptions and sustained by sea ice this is what a new study indicates. The research, which looked at chemical clues preserved in Arctic vegetation, as well as other data, also pinpointed the start of the Little Ice Age to the end of the 13th century. During the coal spell, which lasted into the 19th century, advanced glaciers destroyed northern American towns and froze the Thames River in London and the canals in the Netherlands, places that are now ice-free. 
There's also evidence that affected other continents, this is according to Life Science by Wayne Perry. Quote, this is the first time anyone has clearly identified the specific onset of the cold times, marked, marking the start of the Little Ice Age. This is what Gifford Miller said, geological sciences professor at University of Colorado Boulder, lead study researcher. He says we also have provided an understandable climate feedback system that explains how this cold period could be sustained for a long period of time. The cause appears to have been massive tropical volcanic eruptions, which spewed tiny particles called aerosols into the atmosphere. While suspended in the air, the aerosols reflect solar radiation back into space, cooling the planet below. The cooling was sustained after the aerosols had left the atmosphere by a sea ice feedback in the northern Atlantic Ocean. This is what the researchers believe. Expanding sea ice would have melted into the North American Ocean, interfering with the normal mixing between surface and deeper waters. This meant the water flowing back to the Arctic was colder, helping to sustain large areas of sea ice, which in turn reflect sunlight back into the atmosphere. The result was a self-sustaining feedback loop. Miller and colleagues came to these conclusions by looking at radiocarbon dates, based on how much of the radiocarbon form of carbon they contain from dead plants revealed by melting ice on Baffin Island in the Canadian Arctic. Their analysis found that many plants at both high and low altitudes died between the year 1275 and 1300 AD, evidence that Baffin Island froze over suddenly. Many plants also disappeared appeared to have died around uh, 1450 AD, an indication of a second major cooling. The periods coincide with two of the most volcanically active half-centuries in the past millennium. According to the researchers, they found that the annual layers and sediment cores from Glacial Lake linked with an ice cap in Iceland suddenly became thicker, indicating increases, increased erosion caused by the expansion of the ice cap in the late 13th century and in the 15th century. Quote, this gave us a great deal more confidence that there was a major perturbation in the Northern Hemisphere climate near the end of the 13th century, Miller said. Simulations using a climate model showed that several large, closely spaced eruptions could have cooled the Northern Hemisphere enough to spark sea ice growth and the subsequent feedback loop. It's unlikely decreased solar radiation, a separate theory to explain the Little Ice Age, played a role, according to the researchers. We should talk about the modern minimum the Maunder Minimum is also known as the Prolonged Sunspot Minimum, name used for the period around 1645 to 1715, during which sunspots became exceedingly rare, as was then noted by solar observers. The term was introduced after John Eddy published a landmark 1976 paper in Science. Astronomers before Eddy had also named the period after the solar astronomer Annie Russell Maunder, and her husband, Edward Walter Maunder, who studied how sunspot latitudes change with time. The period which the spousers examined included the second half of the 17th century. Two papers were published in Edward Maunder's name in 1890 and 1894. He cited earlier papers written by Gustav Sporer because Annie Maunder had not received a university degree. Restrictions in the time caused her contribution not to be publicly recognized. Sporer noted that during a 28-year period from 1672 to 1699 within the modern minimum, observations revealed fewer than 50 sunspots. This contrasted with the typical 40,000 to 50,000 sunspots seen in modern times over similar 25-year sampling. Like the Homeric minimum, the Dalton minimum, the Sporer minimum, 
the moderate minimum coincided with a period of lower than average European temperatures. Moderate minimum occurs between 1645, 1715. Very few sunspots observed. It was not because of a lack of observations as during the 17th century. The total number of sunspots, but not uh, wolf numbers, were in different years were as follows. 1610, nine sunspots. 1626 sunspots. 1639 sunspots. 1640, zero. 1653, 1660, some sunspots, less than 20. 1670, zero. And 1681, one huge sunspot observed by Giovanni Domenico Cassini. And during the modern minimum, enough sunspots were cited so that 11-year cycles could be extrapolated from the count. The maximum count occurred in 1676 to 77, 1684, 1695, 1705, and 1718. Sunspot activity was then concentrated in the southern hemisphere of the sun, except for the last cycle when sunspots appeared to be northern hemisphere as well. Now, the Little Ice Age, the modern, minu the modern minimum, coincided roughly with the middle part of the Little Ice Age, during which Europe and North America experienced colder than average temperatures. Where there is a casual relationship, however, is still under evaluation. The research at the Technical University of Denmark and Hebrew University of Jerusalem linked large solar eruptions to changes in the Earth's cloud cover and clouds are known to affect global temperatures. The current best hypothesis for the cause of the Little Ice Age is that it was a result of the volcanic action. The onset of the Little Ice Age also occurred well before the beginning of the Maunder Minimum, and northern hemisphere temperatures during the Maunder Minimum were not significantly different from the previous 80 years, suggesting a decline in solar activity was not the main cause driver of the Little Ice Age. Correlation between the low sunspot activity in cold winters in England recently have been analyzed using longest existing surface temperature of record, Central England temperature record. And they emphasize that this is a regional and seasonal effect relating to European winters and not a global effect. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.